If you're interested in measuring FM tuner performance and some exotic test equipment, then this video will be for you. So today we're going to measure the performance of this Macintosh MR74 AM FM tuner. Only going to take a look at the FM side using the Roden Schwartz UPL audio analyzer and the SML signal generator. So Roden Schwartz came out with some documents back in the 90s and early 2000s and some software to measure RF FM radio tuners using this equipment. They also wrote some similar software for some of the other equipment like the later UPV audio analyzer and there was an earlier version as well. So what this does is the SML01 on top is the RF signal generator and that has the option SML-B5 in it which is the FM stereo encoder. Um, and then the UPL is the audio analyzer, stereo audio analyzer. Uh, so basically the way it's cabled is the UPL on the, the left two cables are the generator output which are going into the back of the SML on top to the FM stereo options left and right inputs and the analyzer section of the UPL is connected to the RCA jacks on the back of the tuner and then of course we have the output from the SML which is um, connected there's a 5.7 db 50 to 75 ohm minimum loss pad and then a cable that I have which is a 75 ohm BNC to F connector plugged into the back of the tuner so this test is uh, going to run uh, they suggest it at 98 megahertz for the band that's used in the United States which is 88 to 108 I'm actually going to set it to 98.3 since we have a station at 97.9 here that's probably the strongest station I pick up so that'll skew the readings. So let me change the uh, camera angle here and show you what this looks like on the UPL. Okay so here's a look at the front of the SML01 and the UPL. Now this is a basic file, it's Roden Schwartz basic which is built into the UPL if you have option B10. Option B10 is just a software option so if you have a UPL that doesn't have B10 there's a key gen online you can use to get the installation key for that and I've already started it so we'll see here there's the tests along the bottom you can run them individually and if you hit the next button there's a few more tests there on the left side on the right side we're going to take a look at the setup so I can show you some of the variables they expect you to enter so we've got the GPIB address of the SML generator which is 28 which is the default uh, and by the way these are connected with a GPIB cable between them and then the max system deviation, we're going to do 75 kilohertz. So that's the standard for the FM broadcast in the states. And we're also doing 75 microseconds preemphasis. And then the attenuation atten antenna matching, they want to know the loss of your adapter here. So this one is a Pasternak PE7006. It's rated 5.7 dB. If you use a 75 to 300 ohm ballon, you've got to figure out what the loss on the ballon is, and I don't know what that is. I tried looking at data sheets for those, and, uh, and typically this is, this is what I'm referring to. This is like on an old TV, 75 to 300 ballon. There's no data sheets on any of these that have any sort of loss information on them. Then the other problem with that is that there's typically another 300 to 75 ohm ballon on the inside of the tuner on the 300 ohm input. So you'd have to know the loss of that to get good sensitivity measurements, right? So I'm just sticking with 75 ohm on everything I test because that goes straight into the front end of the tuner and we know what our loss is, okay? And then the measuring RF level, that's uh, 0.87 millivolts, that's the default. They explain that in the PDF document that I'll link in the description that talks about all the test conditions. And the test is actually, what do they say here? It's um, it's designed to test against the DIN standard EN60315-4. Roden Schwartz being a European company, it would make sense that they're using European standard. And the other thing is here, so our measuring frequency, I actually got it set to 100 right now because I was playing around with that last night. I'm going to change it back to 98.3 megahertz. Um, they talk about needing to ground or float it, so if they're saying that if your RF connection is not grounded, which in this case it is, so I'm leaving the analyzer on floating, then you'll need to try it grounded. Um, I actually have it on grounded right now. I'm going to change it back to floating. And you can display your THD plus N in decibels or percentage. 
So let me hit enter again. And as far as the MR74 goes, let me show you what the front panel controls are set to on that. All right, so the MR74, the first test we're gonna do, we'll leave it set to FM stereo, stereo filter off, selectivity normal, FM muting off, and the volume control has no impact on it because um, I'm using the fixed output on the back. So let's get this centered up here on 98.3 megahertz, and I'll go back to the UPL now. Oh, and one more thing. So this MR74, I've never serviced it myself. I bought it used last summer, and um, there's an Audio Classic sticker on the bottom, and when I popped it open to take a look inside, I found this little sticker. It says RM, June 6, 2003, so... This would have been serviced by Richard Modafferi at Audio Classics. So one thing I did with the script, the tuner script, for the UPL, I modified a few things on it. Um, the first thing I did was change the command that initialized the SML because what was happening was, on the SML, if you use an external reference, which I do, I have it hooked up to the Rubidium and the GPS. Not that you really need that for working on a tuner, but... It's better than the, this one doesn't even have the ovenized oscillator in it, so I'd prefer to use the external one since I have it. Um, but it basically presets the instrument, and on the SML, the um, oscillator setting, the reference setting, you have to set after you preset the instrument because it goes back to the internal one. So I just added a line in there to set that. The other thing I did was, in the UPL, um, when you save the screenshots, they were in black and white. They're in a PCX file format, so you'd have to convert that with something like Image Magic once you get it off the floppy drive and onto a modern computer. Even the Mac preview application can't view PCX files. Um, and I just wanted them in color because it's nicer. Um, so that those are the only two changes I made to the script. You can make other changes to the script if you needed to. That's the nice thing about it being a basic script. It's all open and available. They did have a later version of this program that actually was a Windows application that controlled these two instruments over GPIB and gave you files that you could open in Microsoft Excel or Word. I haven't tried that one yet. I'm going to try that eventually, but just kind of getting started here. So let me show you an example of one of the tests. We'll just run one at a time first, and then I'll let it run through all of them. So we'll try frequency response. And while that's running, I'll read the frequency response out of the manual. I have the service manual for the MR74 here. The frequency response is plus minus 1 dB, 20 hertz to 15 kilohertz with uh, 75 de-emphasis and a 19 kilohertz pilot filter, which they actually talk about each of the tests in the manual here. And let's see here. See if they talk about a filter on the frequency response. So here's the, I don't expect you to be able to read this. I'll put a link in the description below to this document on their website. Um, I don't see if they, I don't think they mention a filter here. Yeah, without a bandpass filter. So there's no filter there. Anyways, we are out of spec on frequency response especially on the high end, so there's a little bit of a bump in the mid-range there, and then it rolls off pretty sharp. And I did test this on some other tuners, like some, I have a Carver CT3 preamp, which is like a, you know, 1990-ish digital tuner, and it's a lot flatter across the board. So, so this thing might need some work. I mean, it looks like it has all original capacitors and whatnot in it. So that, that's one of the tests. Um, let's do another one. Let's do the um, total harmonic distortion plus noise versus frequency. And the THD plus N on this is specified at 0.3% at 75 kilohertz deviation. And 0.5%, sorry, that was mono. Stereo is 0.5%. So you can see we're mostly around 0.5 percent it's a little high on the low end so might need to look into that a little but overall not too bad so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it run through the entire test sequence okay so to run through the entire test sequence we just go to the page two and then you hit the all button 
and now we wait. So it'll rerun the first two tests that we did. Frequency response and THD plus N versus frequency. The next test is THD and noise versus modulation deviation. This next test is crosstalk versus frequency, so between the left and right channels. This one is crosstalk as a function of modulation frequency. Oh, actually, sorry, this one is crosstalk versus RF level. So you'll see here around just under three microvolts, the stereo encoder decoder switches in, which is why crosstalk suddenly jumps. Okay, this is crosstalk versus modulation deviation. Stereo separation on this isn't looking too great. I was looking for it in the manual just now, and I, I'm, not, I'm not seeing it here. I'll have to look into that a little more. This is the signal to noise of the audio frequency signal, the modulated signal versus RF level. And you can see where the FM decoder or stereo decoder kicks in there. All of a sudden, your noise floor goes up, which is expected. Okay, this is input signal, output signal characteristics. Relation between the antenna input voltage and the audio signal generated by the tuner. Again, there's the stereo decoder kicking in. There's the RF level in microvolts, 0.1 to 10,000. The last one was the pilot subcarrier suppression, and that flashed up on the screen really quick. So basically, you get a summary page here at the end. You get your audio level. You get your maximum signal to noise ratio. Now let me see what that says that's supposed to be in the manual. Um, so that's supposed to be 70 dB down. So this thing is not performing perfectly. And then you get your signal to noise ratio at oh, the, the level of RF needed for 50, 40, and 30 dB signal to noise ratio. So that drops progressively. Sensitivity for stereo switching, 3.3 microvolts. Let's see if that is in here. Um, they just say 2.5 microvolts. They don't say what it is for stereo itself. Pilot suppression, 43.8 dB. Uh, I don't believe that's in here either. So... They have the SCA filter, which is 50 dB. So that's that's kind of the, the challenging part. Is I'm not an expert on tuners, 
whatsoever. I've only aligned maybe a dozen of them. I'm sure I'm not doing it 100% uh, perfectly since I haven't been doing it too long. I'm hoping this will help me get better at it since I basically can do a single button test before and after to make sure I didn't make anything worse. You know, this would have, I have a lot of other equipment that I could have done all this manually on, but this is just really cool that it does it all in one shot. So then you can, you can save the report and you can recall it later on, or you can view each of these. Yeah, I would imagine this is supposed to have better stereo separation than that 20, less than 25 dB. I mean, I normally see 40, 45 or higher. I think the um, sensitivity looks decent on it though. So, and there's our 19 kilohertz pilot, 38 kilohertz, and um, I forget what that is. Is that 50, 58, I think? 57, 57, yeah, 57 kilohertz. It's like the third harmonic of the 19. So, I thought of a few more things to try. So, I'm going to set the stereo filter to 1, and then we'll run the frequency response test again. You'll see it's no longer flat. It looks similar when I set it to stereo filter too. So this is supposed to be a noise reduction setting. It's not sure why it's affecting uh, frequency response that much. And the other thing that we'll try here is we'll take another look at stereo separation. So when I was talking earlier, I was looking at the service manual here, which didn't have as much information as the regular owner's manual, which I don't have a printed copy of but they list the uh, stereo separation at 35 dB at one kilohertz. So let's take a look at that. So that would be crosstalk versus frequency. And we'll look at one kilohertz here. And we are at around 25 on the left channel, like 23 on the right channel. So this can use some work. It'll be interesting to rebuild this, align it, and run these tests again. Well, that's all I got for now. Like I said, I'm, I'm still learning tuners and tuner alignments and RF in general, so if you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them down below. And in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed seeing this. I don't think I've seen anyone demo this before. I haven't seen many videos on the UPL in general, so um, I plan to make more videos on it as I learn more about it. And i got to replace this screen backlight eventually. It doesn't look bad on camera, but it's really dim in person, which uh, is apparently a common issue on these UPLs. So, thanks for watching.